The centuries-old Central Asian nation of Kazakhstan celebrates 25 years as a sovereign state independent of Russian colonization. Decades of Soviet rule ended in 1991 with the collapse of the USSR's economy. For the newly independent republics like Kazakhstan, there was no time to lose. The move from a centralized socialist system to an open market economy had to be carried out as quickly as possible. Well, I remember that uh, those years were years of great uncertainty, great uh, despair. Uh, and uh, people were really uh, shocked at uh, all the events that were taking place. Um, I, I would say that the shock was um, uh, also coupled with elation. And the most difficult decisions were how to basically build a, a new economy uh, as the former economy was collapsing in front of our eyes as all the uh, economic links that existed uh, and mostly with, the, um, other, with other countries in the former Soviet Union as they were collapsing, as the unemployment uh, shot up, as the uh, inflation uh, went through the roof. I remember very well how the uh, shopkeepers were practicing their skills at um, uh, putting up all those pyramids out of the same kind of produce. So they would have like, um, I don't know, 200 cans of canned uh, potatoes and they would put them in stacks, in different stacks, in different formations and that was all you can see on the, on the shelves. It's not a secret that Kazakhstan inherited uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, administrative culture from the Soviet Union and uh, by <clears throat> this we mean uh, administrative legacy uh, that was very much centralized, uh, that was very much uh, Soviet in many ways, that was uh, not focused on quality of governance rather than an expansion of resources, overuse of resources, and we tried to change that mentality, to shift uh, gears a little bit, uh, to prepare the next generation of leaders. And uh, I think Kazakhstan can be proud of how far it has come in a very short while. Um, and uh, the... the, um, the it cannot be overemphasized uh, how big the initial challenges were for for this country, because it was long seen by the when when uh, 25 years ago is probably maybe the most vulnerable vulnerable of the new states. But instead of buckling under, Kazakhstan became an example for the rest of Central Asia. What held the country together was uh, this uh, spirit of. Uh, of belief in the future, the spirit again of elation uh, at, at the fact that uh, the country was independent um, after many, many decades and centuries and was, was able to itself determine its domestic and foreign policy. I think this is what uh, combined helped us uh, overcome those difficulties. Uh, and I think the very fact that there were um, a lot, and a con there are, continue to be a lot of natural resources uh, have, have also helped. But uh, it was through prudent policies on how to use those resources, how to build up the economy and how to build up a market economy is how we survived. But Kazakhstan has loftier goals than just surviving. And so it is open to the observations, opinions, and recommendations from a wide range of international experts as it maps out strategy for the next 25 years. Kazakhstan relied on oil, gas, and other raw materials for so long. Now this is a time to develop non-natural resources, um, e economy, and earn a living, uh, hopefully a better living, uh, not by being a supplier of raw materials, but adding value up the chain, providing services, and moving into high added value uh, areas. I think uh, the, the, the right approach was to, uh, to pursue uh, open economic uh, policy, attract uh, foreign direct investments and uh, attract foreign companies, and uh, uh, that played a huge role. Kazakhstan is, uh, is a country with a transition economy and a landlocked country. So among all uh, landlocked countries with transition economies, we're number one in terms of attracting FDI. And uh, among all uh, countries with transition economy, we're number two after Russia. Uh, Kazakh government launched an industrialization program six years ago. 
and uh, now we see a lot of uh, foreign direct invas investments coming to manufacturing sector. Kazakhstan is currently seeking public-private partnerships to build a ring road around Almaty, the country's largest city, which will be part of an international highway running from western China to western Europe. We, we are trying to bring uh, investors from all over the world uh, to PPP projects uh, and uh, one of the biggest is uh, Ring Road around Almaty. That's going to be a massive PPP project. The road to economic success over the next 25 years isn't paved with oil. So the challenges are partly economic, they are partly in foreign policy. Uh, in economic area, as you know, uh, 25 years of Kazakhstan's development was fueled by oil. We think that the next 25 years cannot be fueled only by oil, which requires diversification, which is a very difficult issue. Another challenge is to continue policies that have been started to overcome Soviet institutional legacy and part particularly the problems of corruption, which are common to all post-Soviet states. We also view the regional environment of Kazakhstan as quite challenging, especially relations with Russia and China. But we view those in the short term to be quite challenging. But in the longer term, it is our projection that domestic factors, both in Russia and in China, will make it more likely for Kazakhstan to be able to achieve equitable relations with big neighbors that accept the sovereignty and statehood of the country. For Kazakhstan to succeed, it needs a strong, diverse economy. Now, there are many, many steps being taken which are very positive and will bring about that goal. However, we do suggest perhaps a stronger emphasis on the agricultural potential of the country. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, there are few land areas suitable for agriculture left in the world. Kazakhstan, Russia, and Ukraine are the exceptions, with Kazakhstan having the potential to become a Eurasian breadbasket. У Казахстана нет выхода к морю. Но с другой стороны, сейчас, когда мы видим, что вот рынок таможенного союза, это около 180-190 миллионов человек, это рынок Китая, который, с которым все больше и больше у нас налаживаются торговые отношения, налаживается торговая инфраструктура. Это огромный рынок, который, для которого нам, нам не нужно море. Мы можем по железной дороге, по автомобильным дорогам поставлять всю эту продукцию. То есть рынки рядом. То есть есть самое главное, нам Всевышний дал землю и дал, и, и дал соседей, которым нужно очень много продовольствия. То есть остается только работать и э, производить эту продукцию. Despite recent advances made in the agricultural sector, Kazakhstan is pushing ahead with more profound reforms on land tenure and efforts to modernize the industry. Independence from Soviet agrarian control gave Kazakh farmers a new lease on life and hope for the future. Люди, наши люди почувствовали себя реальными хозяевами своей земли, техники, производства, хозяевами своей жизни. Это главное. Independence from atheist Soviet Union also provided a spiritual spark to millions of Kazakh believers, with a sharp increase in the construction of mosques and churches, and even a visit from Pope John Paul II in 2001 to mark the country's 10th independence anniversary. Одним из первых законов независимого Казахстана был закон о свободе религии и совести. Один из первых законов. Это был прекрасный визит, и история католической церкви в Казахстане как бы заново началась, потому что католики здесь давно в Казахстане, но визит Яна Павла II был таким особенным благословением и даром для католической церкви, а также для всего Казахстана. Но по воле Всевышнего После того, как мы обрели свою независимость в 1991 году, мудрое правление нашего 
главы государства, дало нам возможность осознать вот эти упущенные наши ценности, взглянуть, оглянуться да, назад и стать нашей религией на ноги. С тех пор было построено порядка двух с половиной тысяч мечетей на территории Казахстана. И сегодня мы, наверное, одна из тех стран на постсоветском пространстве, в которой на религиозной почве да, никаких межконфессиональных конфликтов не было. One sector that required an overhaul was education. The Bolshak International Scholarship Program was set up in 1993, two years after independence, where leading students were given the chance to study abroad. Граждан Казахстана получить действительно качественное мирового уровня образования в зарубежных университетах. И программа Болшак дала такой им шанс. Это была идея идея для президента, чтобы люди, молодые, сальга, видели, как живут в других странах, что мы также un poco aprendamos, digamos, la experiencia de otros países и apliquemos en práctica en nuestro país, y creo que funciona. After completing their studies in not only Western countries, but also in Russia, Turkey, China, and South Korea, students return to fulfill their commitment to work in their homeland for five years. Meanwhile, Kazakhstan developed higher education within its borders with world-class institutions, such as Nazarbayev University, among others. The university were opened in 2010, six and a half years ago, with a mission to basically uh, educate, nurture, educate and develop the next generation leaders of Kazakhstan, pretty much in all spheres. Our ambition is not just to serve Kazakhstan, but actually more the region, and ultimately become really integrated into some of the world's leading uh, educational academic centers. So. Uh, here the idea is slightly different, is uh, instead of sending uh, our students abroad, we actually educate them here. We bring um, very good, uh, talented scholars from all over the world to teach here at Nazarbayev University. Um, and both Bolashak program and uh, Nazarbayev University, they are tools really for um, bringing uh, best expertise. The newly independent Kazakhstan's principle of a strong secular state with religious tolerance and respect for its multi-ethnic population gave rise to a new Kazakh kinship as well as recognition as being a leader in Central Asia. It also helped Kazakhstan become the first former Soviet Republic to win a seat on the United Nations Security Council. The development of Central Asia onto the UN agenda. Well, for the national identity, I think the most important uh, decision that was made was that this is a country for all the people that live here. Uh, this is a country that is being built on the land that traditionally belonged to the Kazakhs, and the Kazakhs gave their name to the country, but it is the country for all. And it, the national identity is built on the principle of citizenship, not ethnic background. Uh, internationally, I think the most important decision that Kazakhstan has made was to renounce nuclear weapons uh, that we inherited from the Soviet Union and uh, shut down the semi palatinsk nuclear test site um, and continue to be a leader in, in, in nuclear disarmament. As I said, uh, we, we are proud of the fact that we became a responsible global citizen. We contribute to the global good. We uh, built, uh, together with our neighbors in Central Asia, we built a Central Asian nuclear weapon free zone, which includes five countries. We have um, divested ourselves of nuclear weapons. We shut down the test site, eliminated its infrastructure, and continued to campaign globally for a nuclear weapon free world. And when Kazakhstan campaigns for a nuclear weapon free world, uh, our message is heard because of uh, the, the past history and the continued activism of our president internationally. Ну, совершенно верно, вы отметили это основа будет нашего непостоянного членства в Совете Безопасности. Казахстан не просто как в собственном качестве, он также пытается позиционировать себя как представителя Центральноазиатского региона. Да, совершенно верно, чтобы больше привлечь внимание и сфокусировать на ряд вопросов, проблемных вопросов, в том числе 
в развитии нашего региона и нашего окружения. Это, как я уже говорил, возвращаясь к началу нашей беседы, это и соседство наше с Китаем, с Россией, и с Афганистаном, с Ираном. У нас не, необычное, скажем так, геополитическое окружение. И естественно, чем больше будет мир знать о процессах в Центральной Азии, чем больше мы будем представлены, открытые глобальному миру, тем, мы полагаем, будут лучше защищены и продвигаться наши интересы на мировой линии. As Kazakhstan moves towards its next 25 years as a sovereign state, it is taking steps to ensure future independence through regional interaction and strategic partnerships that would discourage foreign interference or indifference to the wishes of Astana. The greatest way for Kazakhstan to leverage its position in the, is to do so with its neighbors. There should be as strong institutions within Central Asia, without America, without Russia, without China, without India, without Europe, the, to have Central Asian institutions. This will give you, what, 150 million people, something, a large number. The way for Kazakhstan to increase its leverage is to link arms with its neighbors in Central Asia. En un ámbito regional, eh, creo que es necesario destacar eh, el papel fundamental que Kazajstán juega como pilar para eh, basar en ese pilar la estabilidad eh, económica, social y política de toda la región de Asia, de Asia Central. During the initial glow of independence and economic urgency, however, Kazakhstan saw greater immediate opportunities in the West. Uh, the European Union is Kazakhstan's largest foreign investor, it's Kazakhstan's largest foreign trade partner. Um, it is um, a source of um, inspiration in terms of um, modernizing our economy, in terms of modernizing our laws, in terms of developing our civil society. So Kazakhstan, um, several years back, we even implemented a program called the Path to Europe. It was a three-year program which uh, focused on updating and upgrading our legislation. And um, as a result of that, Kazakhstan became a, uh, a more westernized country, if you will. Of course, we are a Eurasian country. We are straddling uh, Europe and Asia, but uh, we feel like uh, we, we have a lot to, to learn and a, whole, a lot to earn from uh, working closely with the European Union and that's our message to our European friends. And really, uh, within those 25 years, your country became not only a very important regional leader, but also on global uh, scene, they have, uh, you have contributed to uh, um, peace and stability, and uh, these are things which uh, we, uh, as your partner, European Union, we very much appreci uh, appreciate. We uh, want to be part of these connectivity projects in uh, uh, Central Asia. We are also developing communication and um, we are working also with China to make sure that their connectivity uh, project, One Belt, One Road, is also connected with our projects uh, of connectivity. And here, your country has a very central uh, position and location. In Kazakhstan speaks always about a multivectorial uh, foreign policy. And this is important. So one of the main vectors of this multivectorial policy is the relationship to Europe and to the European Union. Uh, I would say we have a very nice relationship. It was defined as strategic in a, a bilateral agreement. It was uh, not, Spain has not uh, this definition with many countries. One of the exceptions to this general rule of not using this word is Kazakhstan uh, is important. Uh, and this was the, the beginning of a good relationship and it, I think it works well. Of course, of course, there are lots of things to do in the economy, in, the tr in trade, in culture. While visiting the European Union nation Spain in 2008, Kazakh President Nursultan Nazarbayev was so impressed by what he saw at the International Expo in Zaragoza that he set out to win the right to host an expo in the capital Astana. And the bid was a success. Expo 2017 Astana on Future Energy kicks off in June. So that the, the membership of, of uh, 
in, in United Nations uh, Security Council is one example how they have succeeded. And also Expo 2017. To get the Expo today is a very, very positive performance. Again, Kazakhstan is the world's largest producer and exporter of natural uranium. It's one of the world's largest oil and gas producers uh, and exporters. However, uh, we decided to campaign for an expo that would be focusing on future energy, alternative energy solutions. And we won in that campaign in 2012. We were given the right to host Expo 2017. Now in the final, we are in the final stages of preparing for Expo. Pero uh, consciente de las obligaciones medioambientales que eh, las países avanzados eh, eh, asumen en el marco de la política global de medio ambiente y especialmente tras la eh, conferencia de París, eh, Kazajstán está dando un ejemplo y está marcando el camino para que otras naciones de Asia Central, de nuevo el marco regional, sigan su ejemplo y eh, comprendan las ventajas de invertir y desarrollar eh, energías eh, renovables. So we want uh for these industries to develop in, in, in the country, but we also want to see what the world has to offer, uh, not only to us, but to, to itself. And uh, Expo 2017 will be a great opportunity for all the world to showcase uh, the best technologies that have been produced internationally. Among the Kazakh kinship, it is clear that a quarter century of success stories did not come about simply by wishful thinking and government decrees. En 25 años el país ha avanzado mucho. Eso se nota, se nota en los, por ejemplo, en los salarios, en el nivel de vida. Y claro que esto pasó gracias a los esfuerzos de gobierno y de presidente, pero también detrás de toda esta política y de to todas las estrategias que fueron implementados por el presidente hay un enorme esfuerzo hecho por la gente y por el pueblo de Kazajstán y que conste que también el pueblo de Kazajstán hemos aportado mucho en el desarrollo de este país. Kazajstán, under the leadership of Nazarbayev, often labeled by the West as authoritarian, aspires to be one of the top 30 global economies by 2050 by following the president's 100 concrete steps initiative and adhering to good governance. The program entails five crucial reforms, namely the creation of a modern and professional civil service, ensuring the rule of law, industrialization and economic growth, a unified nation for the future, as well as transparency and accountability of the state. There is a, uh, the culture of strong leadership in Central Asia, and uh, that's not a secret. Uh, here in Kazakhstan, we also have a strong, uh, strong leadership. Uh, but as long as uh, the quality of governance uh, is good, I think uh, that's uh, perhaps at this stage of development of Kazakhstan is what uh, really matters. Uh, of course, eventually, uh, there will be more uh, transparency and openness uh, politically. Um, but also, we have to keep in mind, um, you know, it's a new country uh, that was appeared, uh, appeared um, in the aftermath of the Soviet Union collapse. Um, economy was in this disaster. We had a lot of uh, strong and powerful geopolitical uh, neighbors, uh, including Russia and China and other uh, places. Um, so, of course, I mean that did, to some extent, require a strong, uh, strong leadership. There have been many. There's been much discussion in all the post-Soviet states about democratization, which is important and it's an obvious and necessary goal. But there are preconditions, pre that need to be put in place. And I, we propose to focus on those preconditions. One of them is good governance. In this case, our message is mainly for the Western partners of Kazakhstan, which have focused their activities almost exclusively on the dichotomy of democracy versus autocracy, not focusing on promoting the quality of government. And our recommendation to the Western partners of Kazakhstan is to focus on the good government, which means the quality of government, and improving the uh, reform process that has already been launched, instead of focusing on issues that are less uh, practical to the citizens of Kazakhstan, which has been the case very much for some of Kazakhstan's Western partners. People will argue about democratization, but on good governance, there's no argument. It's good for everybody.